Hello, in this class we will be creating different types of presentations. So let's walk through how to create a PowerPoint presentation. First of all, you will have to be using PowerPoint. So there are two different ways as to how you can use this. First of all, going to office.com or second, being able to buy a version for your own computer. The first option is going to office.com. And as you can see, you can log in using your credentials. You will have to use your email account and it will provide you access to all these resources. You'll have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all included by being a student. So once you go to office.com, you will simply click on PowerPoint. Once you click on PowerPoint, you will be able to click a create a new blank presentation. This would be the easiest way and all of this is done online. So you will only need a internet connection to be able to use this by going to office.com. The second way is by accessing, by buying a uh, version that's not online, but that's on your computer. This will be, there's a different prices for student. It ranges, but it's around 150. There's also a membership uh, that goes by $6.99. But again, you do have already the online complete version by being a student. So take advantage of that. Second thing is where do you get all the information? You will need to be able to know where to get your information. So for images, there's going to be different ways. And for text, it's going to be pretty similar. So let's start with images. First website that I recommend is called Art Store. As you can see in the top right, very similar. You have access by being a college student. So you will have to create an account, username and password using your college email. Again, using your college email, you will create an Art Store account. Just simply go into this website, Art Store. And then in Art Store, you'll be able to search. So in this case, let's search for Notre Dame, a cathedral, a Gothic cathedral. So when you search for that, you'll see that you'll have thousands of results depending on what you're searching for. In this case, we have thousands of results. So I'm gonna click on the first option. We're gonna click on this one. And you'll see that uh, in this case, it just really, really zoomed in. There's different options of how to zoom in. You can see the original image is still here, but they prov this website provides high quality, high resolution images for you. Not only that, it's going to give you already information to create a working title. I'm going to be talking about that later on, but this information is going to come in very, very useful. You're just simply going to click download and be able to use these images. The second way is if you have access to the book for this class, which is Building Across Time, but in a digital ebook format. If you do, if you do not, don't worry. But if you have access to this, it comes in very handy because you can download images straight from the digital book. This is being used through Vital Source. The book, the way, uh, the website that I use is called Vital Source. You can try and look at the book there, and uh, and see if you want to purchase that digital book or rent it. You can simply right click on the image and it'll click Save As, and then you'll be able to use that image. Not only that, but you also have the option to use the title. Again, the title is going to be very important. And I'll explain that later on. The last option is pretty uh, the most common for many students, and it's just doing a Google search. But by doing a Google search, be, be sure that you have a good reliable source and that you'll be able to find that the image is public domain and that you'll be able to have some sort of uh, citations for it. So in this case, uh, this image is just a Google search, again, the same uh, cathedral, but uh, it takes me to Wikipedia. And then in Wikipedia, I'm going to click more details. And when I do that, I can see that I have all this information that it tells me, again, a, a working title. So it's really going to be up to you. I recommend you start with Art Store. And if you have the book, those will be your, your best, too, since you have high quality images. So the next thing would be the content. So uh, what is uh, what can you include? Make sure that your uh, presentations have clear titles clear to the point that your information is 
bullet points, not big paragraphs, but just clear to the point of bullet points, but that you use your own words. Try to express your own ideas as possible and not just copy and paste. Use high resolution images with titles, which is what we talked about a couple of seconds ago, and make sure that there's in-page citation. I'll explain that a bit further. This goes into the formatting. So how does your presentation should look? It should have a very simple background. Your text and your images is what's most important. So uh, that's what really needs to take center stage. Make sure you have a good layout. You have um, uh, your font sizes. They're very, very similar. You're not changing font sizes and also font colors. Here are some examples. So example number one, if you have to say this is a good slide or bad slide, what would you say? Hopefully you uh, answer this is a bad slide for many reasons, right? There's no images. Um, you can very clearly see that this was just copied and pasted, that you can see the hyperlinks are still active. It's just copied and pasted, right? So this is not a good slide. Let's go to this example. So again, if you wanna pause and think, is this a good slide or a bad slide? Hopefully you answered this was a bad slide. So the information got a lot better. Uh, the information did get reduced, but the background is so um, hard to see, right? There's no citations, there's no uh, citation for the image, no title for the image, and, and it's very hard to see. So this again is not a good slide. What about this one? Hopefully you answered also not a good slide. It's a lot better, but you can see the text is still, you know, very long, it's very lengthy, it's not, it's not you know, uh, short to the, to, to the point. And so in this case, and not only that, but it's missing citations, there's no title for the image. And the title of this slide is just the, the name of the building. But what about, how, what, what about this building? Is this talking about the construction? Is this talking about uh, materials? What is this uh, slide all about? So let's look at this one. So this one, what do you think? Hopefully you said this one was good. You see that the title now it says Notre Dame early years, right? So we know that it's talking about the construction, how it all began. We see the image on the left and it's, you know, spaced out eh, enough to give, you know, separated from the text. But we also see that it has a title, you know? So now I know this is the Gothic style. I can see what this image is about. Not only that, but there's going to be in inside uh, citation. So every slide is going to have its own citation. You can see here very clearly that next to each bullet point, it has a number one, and this one has a number two. What that means is that in the bottom, you can see that it has one and two. So what you will be doing is you're saying, I got this information, this information, and this information from this place, in this case, from the book, page 109. If you're going to be citing the, the book, you need to include the page number. In this case, we're saying that all of these is from the same page, and this one's a different source because it has a different number, and it's the same book, but it's a different page, right? So now it can very easily, uh, anyone who's reading this and wants to go straight to the source, they can go to, th they know this can be found in page 112 of the book, right? So, and not only that, but you can see that the information has become a lot more limited. It's not just about different dates. You can see in the previous, it's like, you can see that it talks about dates, but it's just very, um, you know, just information. But this, it's now being more conceptualized. Now we're gonna say, creating some sort of timeline, creating some sort of idea, right? So that is what you will be creating. One of the, the things that, so when you start creating your PowerPoint, so this is how office.com will look like your PowerPoint online, you will start creating your slides, right? And so one of the biggest things to keep in mind is make sure that your title is consistent in every single slide. So this is gonna be the title and the font and the size is gonna be Calibri and size 48. Make sure that your title size and font style is 48 and Calibri in every single slide. The same thing with your font. So make sure you're, you're consistent with everything. Not only that, 
make sure that your citation number, there's a way to create a subscript as you go in home. Make sure to separate uh, your text and your images, as I mentioned, not overlaying them so it becomes easier to see and read. Uh, there will always be design uh, options that it gives you. You can use those, but remember the goal, the main idea is that it's as clear as possible. So the last thing is exporting. How are you going to get this and upload to Blackboard? You're going to click on the top where it says File, and then when you click on File, it's going to give you the option to download as PDF. You're going to download that as a PDF and upload to Blackboard. It's very, very important that you don't upload a PowerPoint option version or any other file type, but it has to be a PDF. Also, don't share and send me a link to like a hyperlink. It has to be an, uh, an actual file as a PDF. After that, you upload and you should be done and ready to continue on to the next presentation. So thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm glad to help. Have a good day.